guys, it's Alex from Metal Master Kingdom. Uh, we're at the Opera House in Toronto today. Arch Enemy and Creator are here tonight. And I'm joined by the voice of Creator, Milly Petroza. How are you, Milly? Very good, man. How about you? Very good, very good. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome back to Toronto. All right. So, um, to start off, uh, how's your current tour going with Arch Enemy? Couldn't be better. We have um, four great bands on this bill, and the good thing about this tour is that everybody's really getting along and um, there's I think on this whole tour, touring party there's four vegans so I'm not the only one in right. <laughs> this run so uh, they tell me where all the good restaurants are and um, we're, we're just you know me and uh, Michael and, and, and Charlie um, were go way back you know we're good friends and um, so we've always wanted to tour with Arch Enemy. We always had that in mind, in the back of our mind, every time we were like, um, we talked about this a lot in the past, and um, finally it uh, happens. And it's it's very successful, it's very successful. We have packed houses every night, and um, the bands match quite well, you know. So it's good, we're happy. Awesome, awesome. Um, do you want to take us back, Kate? If you can remember the first time Creator played Toronto? Yes, I think I can. Uh, it was a place he would go downstairs. Mm -hmm. I can't recall what it was called, but um, I think we played there with Corner. And, um, but that's way back, I think 99 or something. And back then I was doing like some strange drugs, so I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, but I, I kind of remember you had to go go in and go like it was like you have to go down to the club. The club down was the club was somewhere underground and um, it was a, uh, a little place, but it was packed. Um, that must have been the first time, I guess. Society failed to tolerate me, and I have failed to tolerate society. Still, I can fight what you adore. A fan of Mandy Christ mm -hmm. has done it extremely well ever mm -hmm. since it was released two years ago. Mm -hmm. And you worked with producer Jens Bogren yes, on it. Yeah. Do you see yourselves maybe working with him in the future? Hopefully, yes. Yeah, um, I've sent in a, him one of my new songs, but he didn't respond yet. Maybe he doesn't like it. <laughs> no, we were, we 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 want to we want to we want to do. Um, another album against um, because um, he's just psychologically he's a very um, quiet person and he um, he you know sometimes when in the studio the band members you want to do your best and uh, you get a little nervous and Jens is always like okay calm he calms us down and he grounds us in a way where he's if he likes something he likes it a lot and if he doesn't like something, he wants to make it better so he can like it, if you know what I mean. But he would also tell you straightforward if, if a song is not that strong. So that's something that we need because an outside perspective is always important for an album, you know. I think um, it doesn't make sense. A lot of bands, they just put out everything they came up with on an album and it makes the album like... Sometimes you have too many fillers on an album. So yeah. we try to avoid that. and. By using someone like Andy, uh, Jens, <laughs> Jens, not Andy Sleep, um, but even though we love Andy, you know, yeah, um, he did he did Enemy of God, he, right? He did uh, not only Enemy of God, he did Enemy of God, Violent Revolution, and uh, two life things that we put out. Nice. And um, but but uh, Jens is just um, with him working with him is all about like he kind of. He has a he's a way of like if we have a good riff a good idea for a song he makes it more musical somehow I don't know how you know it's just, he puts on certain harmonies he puts on certain he just gets the sound sounds right and uh, he just he just does something that helps the music and makes it more musical and what he is and, uh, yeah we love working with him. It's definitely a great producer. He's produced yeah. a lot of great albums. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, 
I would like to touch on the topic of the Big Teutonic Four yourselves, construction, <laughs> Sodom, and, yes. and Tankard. Yeah. Um, I would like to get to hear from you. What do you think the possibilities are of maybe seeing some more shows of the four bands playing together? I'm up for it. It's just a matter of like scheduling things, you know. It's like if you have four different bands, um, one band doesn't want to tour on a professional level, the other band doesn't want to tour at all. Yeah. Um, then there's another band that's always out, but always at the time when we we're not in the in the you know it's not it's not easy yeah, yeah it's not always. easy it's it's always just timing and uh, yeah um, we we've done shows uh, together and um, but on the other hand there's also a lot of other things involved you know there's always like uh, we tried to set it up for so many years and I like, kind of like gave up on it a little bit, you yeah. know, because it's it's just hard. It's, it's either that person or that person or this band's not available. Yeah. And it's not the end of the world if it doesn't happen to me, you know, if yeah. you ask me. But it would be cool. It would yeah. definitely be cool for a couple of shows maybe. Yeah. Because you know? I know you guys did the uh, Beast Soul open, open Air. That was great. That was great. Even though it, just, it was uh, raining that day. Yeah, I, I so we didn't that. enjoy it as much as we could, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a big day for us, all of us. and. You know, when when the other bands played, it was all not not raining, but we were playing. It was pouring. Yeah. So there was so many people coming from all over the world, and they were standing there in the rain. You know, it yeah. was it was it was not only raining; it was like a, a thunderstorm. You know, and it's, next day the whole festival was just flooded, and um, mm. uh, it was unfortunate, unfortunate. Um, but. Um, that was good. That was a good. That was a good festival. Yeah. I wish um, maybe when sometimes in the future we can do that again. But you know, like to me, that's not so much talk about this. I mean, our main focus is the next album right yep. now, and uh, we could tour with for Phantom Antichrist forever. We already have more offers for next year to tour, and we just said no. We want yeah. to take a little bit of a break and go and play. Um, so like in festivals? The, not, maybe some festivals, yes. You know, um, some cool festivals that we haven't played yet or, you know, that, that, that makes sense to us. Right. And, um, yeah, we might do that next year, but the main focus should be on the next record. You know, I think that's that's the, main, the most important thing. Otherwise, we'll, we'll never get it done. Yeah. Know? It's true. I was I was in before this tour. I was so so in like songwriting mode, and then I had to go on tour. Not that I don't I love being on the road. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but um, I'm not the kind of person you know. I know so many musicians that just can knock out an album after two tours. You know, like in between two tours, they have three months off, and then they they write the albums album in a, in a week and then they go to the studio next month they release it I'm not like that I'm not I'm, I need I need at least a year to write and then yeah. come make everything right you know write the, the, the right words for it uh, come up with some think about you know think about the the next step of the band and I think that's 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 just very essential uh, if you put out an, another album that's just not as good as Phantom Antichrist yeah we won't release it you know yeah. it, it needs to feel the same yeah. way and it needs to feel like it's um, just as strong if not stronger yeah you know so before we don't have that there would be not another creator album yeah it's our top creator albums uh, across in your entire catalog yeah. yeah and mine too yeah so um all I, all I can say to you as a fan is take your time yeah. we, we, we'll, <laughs> thank you we, we, no, we, pre we appreciate will. everything yeah yeah that's what that's there's no there's no there's no rush you know there, there's yeah. no pressure from anywhere yeah. so before we don't have, I mean, of course, you shouldn't overthink it and you shouldn't be too ambitious sometimes, you know. Yep. So sometimes just trust your 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 instincts, so to speak. Yep. But um, I got a pretty good sense for um, when something's right. And I know that if we take the next year off and we write until the end of the year, it might, there's a huge possibility that we get something done. Cool. So um, I want to step back a few years now to 2010. Um, that year, you did a collaboration with Volbeat on their oh, album 
on their album uh, Beyond Hell Above him, yeah. Above Heaven on the song Seven Shots. Yeah. Uh, how did the, the duet and the collaboration come about? Uh, we, me and Michael we were good friends. You good? And uh, you just asked me if I want to do it and I was like, yeah. It was a good song. It was it, good. I even did a couple of live shows with them. Yeah. I, and, I um, saw the clip of you coming out at, at Vodka Open Air yeah, 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 when yeah. you sang with them. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're just, we're just good friends, you know. I think... Um, and and then Michael he comes from the uh, he has a fresh metal background and yeah. uh, he knows everything about metal and he knows yeah. everything about music in general. He's just a, one of the best musicians that we have at the moment and yeah. um, very talented guy and, and and most and foremost one of the nicest guys in the world. Yeah, I mean um, Volbeat. Uh, I love Volbeat. They're one of the most musically diverse bands on the planet and they can do no wrong. That, that's why I love them. To me, they're, they're just unique. You know, they came up yep. with something that wasn't there before. So. Yep. I, I feel happy for them. Yep. They're they're rising real fast. Yep. So it's cool. Quite a few bands uh, are releasing documentaries uh, on their histories. So, ah. like, we, we have uh, a Rush Beyond the Lighted Stage. Unless, the that, unless, unless that guy is not doing it, I won't do it. You know? So if well, Sam well, Dunn well, doesn't do it, yeah, of course not. If he would do it, I would say yes because I know that he does it right. Yeah. But anyone else, <laughs> yep. he's great. Yes. He's great. But you know, he comes. He has a he has a nice style of like he has he has a good way of like telling the story of the band uh, without boring people to death. Yeah. Because, to be honest with you, I mean, a band's history is not always that exciting. Exactly. Especially when you're not like one of the Motley Crews or Aerosmiths in this world. You know, they yeah. had like, they almost died and had to, uh, you know, go to a hospital because they OD'd or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Those things happen, don't happen in Korea. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, um, Coming up with a documentary about a band that's just no drama, or there's drama but not as much, and no no sensational drama whatsoever, um, could be boring. But I, you know, I saw his documentary that he done he's done on Rush, and they're one of my all time favorite bands. Yeah, but they're the too. same way. They they they're not they're not about drama. They're musicians. They're totally down to earth. Yeah. and they they focus on the music. Exactly. And he made it like of really nice entertainment like yeah. a one and a half hour or whatever however long it was of good entertainment and even bands that don't like the band yeah. can get into it and that's what I like about Sam's work you know he definitely gets it gets to the point where yes it makes it does make sense not like I mean I've seen so many boring band documentaries so I don't want to I don't want to release one you know yeah. uh, one of those boring ones I mean yeah. if Sam wants to do it he's welcome to do it <laughs> but, but you know he, he has other shit to do I guess yeah. but whatever you know um, um, so to me documentaries only make sense if if you get a good vibe you know and a good yep. good entertain you're entertained you know yeah. <laughs> So lately, Russia has become a hot spot for a lot of cancellations. Who's that? Um, Russia. That? Russia. In Russia, yeah. We saw what happened with bands like Behemoth, yes. and Marilyn Manson, and yeah. most recently Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion on the current situation in Russia? I love Russia. Yep. I love the people there. Yeah. I don't know about their politics. It's a little. It's, I don't know too much about it, and I and I I don't know too much about the conservative uh, right wing groups there that, that try to cancel all these bands now, and I don't know what that's all about. I know too little about it to judge the situation. Yeah. But um, I just love the people there. It's we have great great fans in Russia, and we yep. do great tours there. Yep. I hope that next time we go there, we don't get <laughs> we don't get uh, a victim of the cancellation campaign. You yeah. Know? Um, um, so hopefully, hopefully it goes through. Um, 
what else? Uh, I don't know what what the problem is. You know, they, I think with BMF they use they they, they 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 seem to have a lot of problems because of the lyrics because they're so satanic. Who cares? It's art, you know. Yeah. To me, I mean, it's the gimmick. It's a gimmick, you know. To exactly. me, it's like uh, they. It's a part of their. It's a part of their imagery. It's a yeah. part of their, their 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 vibe, and it's they use the satanic thing as a. You know, in a good way, and yeah. it's like, let them be as satanic as they want, you know, they, they're, they're cool people and nice people and very intelligent people, so yeah. they're probably more intelligent than most of those um, conservative right-wing uh, groups that try to yeah. uh, avoid them playing in Russia, you know, so yeah. they, they, should, they should sit down with Nero and discuss things and then they would shut the fuck up, yeah. I bet you. Yeah. the world, no one is to say. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a hype right now. I mean, Cannibal is the same thing. I mean, I love yeah, Cannibal. Me too. But um, I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, they've, they've been in Russia like 10 times before, yeah. probably. You know, nobody canceled their show. Yeah. Until the anti blasphemy law came along. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, recently, um, Gene Simmons uh, made the comment, a rocket's dead. That's got everybody giving their takes on it. Oh, what's your what's your take on that comment? I don't really think that Gene Simmons has a clue, to yeah. be honest. You know, yeah. he's probably so much out there. He doesn't really follow like what's going on. Exactly. Now, how how does he know? He just lives in his world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, not, I don't think I don't think that guy. I mean, he probably doesn't buy the new Exodus album when it comes out. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If he would, he would know that it's not dead. Yeah. You know what exactly, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> There's the proof right there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but he doesn't, he lives in his own world, so let him think Rock is dead. Because maybe he's disappointed that Kiss is not doing too well, sales-wise. Yeah. Life is a different story. Yeah. You know, I'm a big, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm really, I have a lot of respect for Kiss, because if it wasn't for Kiss, I would never have started a band. But sometimes I think musicians should just not say so much in exactly. public, you know what I mean? I feel the same way, I feel the same way. <laughs> it's like, I, get, I read all these comments like, oh, yeah, really, really, really? Yeah. So I, I try try to keep all you know as I try to stay out of that. Yeah. So, so yes. like yeah, the few covers that you've done, Thriker, you've done Lance of the Slaughter mm -hmm. by Raven, mm -hmm. you've done Witching Hour by Venom, mm -hmm. and most recently you did Number of the Beast yeah. for the ten inch uh, single yeah. for Phantom Antichrist. Yeah. Um what are the what are some other songs that you maybe want to cover in the future? I was always like into like in the in the nineties I always tried to get the band to cover um uh, Joy Division song with me, but they didn't. They, did, they were not into it. So yeah. you know, if you do a cover version, everybody then needs to um, yeah. participate and needs to want to do it. Yeah. And um, so yes, I, I'd like to. I like to do some more cover versions, but I don't know. It's not our main focus. Um, it's not our main focus. Um, um, uh, what what cover do we want to do? See, the, the, those things come really spontaneous. Yeah. And um, the maiden thing, when we were in the rehearsal room, I think some magazine in Germany asked us to do a tribute song uh, for a tribute album, but that never happened. Yep. You know, so they were like, "Can you do a maiden tribute?" We're like, "Oh, our maiden is like, it's like a um, redneck band covering Sweet Home Alabama almost." Yeah. You know, it's like everyone has done that. Everyone exactly. has covered maiden, and uh, we were like. Okay, we'll try, and yeah. we cannot promise. And so when we were in the studio, uh, we were like, okay, let's, let's work on that maiden thing. And I couldn't finish the lyrics, uh, the vocals in, in the studio, and then I went back home and with my friend, um, he has a little studio, we finished the lyric, the, the vocals, and um, it came out pretty good. You know, yeah. we were listening to it, and I was like, it's not that bad. And I think for a cover, you can still tell it's creator. Yeah. You can still tell it's us playing Maiden. It doesn't sound like Maiden. It sounds like creator playing yep. Maiden. And that's that's what I like about the covers that we do. Is you can always hear that it's who's playing the cover. You know, it's always, yeah. always like our own interpretation. Hopefully, the Maiden guys like it if they ever hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you, always you, like a tricky thing, you know, like all of a sudden. Um, Steve Harris listens to it and like, oh, what's up with that shit? Yeah. <laughs>
It's hard, man. It's hard. It's like yeah. I know how much uh, Maiden means to to the metal world, and I exactly. know I have a lot of respect, and I didn't wanna, I did not wanna fuck up that song because it's one of my the, one of the reasons why I Maiden is one of the reasons why I play music. Yeah. It's always Kiss, by the way. Yep. So to, to wrap things up, um, as I mentioned before, you're going to be doing uh, one more tour with Arch Enemy in Europe, uh, along with uh, Sodom Invader and select mm -hmm. dates, and then you're pretty much going to focus on the next album. Yeah. Uh, how far along are you guys in the in the writing process? I got two songs. Well, I don't, I'm not sure about the arrangement of the second song. So I'd say I have one and a half songs. Okay. Um, but two song ideas. Uh, one song is quite done. Uh, it's quite great. Uh, it sounds pretty brutal. We'll, okay. we'll go... Um, I think the next album is just gonna be... I don't know what it's gonna be yet. But, yeah. <laughs> but I hope it's gonna be... Like I said, I hope it's gonna be as strong as, strong as Phantom Any Quest. We wanna write songs that... You know, we're... The longer the band goes, uh, yeah. existing, and we, we 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 know that we can, we feel like we can be, we're able to create something that lasts for the. You know, if we write songs now, they need to last for the next uh, decade or whatsoever because we're just constantly touring and we're stuck with these songs. You know, so songs like Hearts of Chaos, Enemy of God, those are songs that are, will always be in the set list from now yeah. on, um, and um, and I hope. We can write some more of these, you know, and that's that's something that we focus on. And the more songs that have that quality, the better, the yeah. better the album gets. Exactly. So I have a little bit of a concept for the album, like a little concept, what it's gonna be like. And um, I need to sit down with the band and explain it to them. And uh, we need to go into a rehearsal room because we're very old school when it comes to that. We're not, we don't send files around. That's right. We don't uh, rehearse on, on Skype, uh, yeah. even though we could, but we don't. Um, I think that's when the songs really come about, you know, that's when yeah. everything is being developed and everything will um, fall into uh, place, hopefully. Cool. And uh, like I said, you're also going to be doing select festivals while working on the album. Mm -hmm. So, like that. And I, you got one in Norway set up or something? Yeah, one festival in Norway. Then we have a, you don't know. I mean, we didn't even we didn't even release all the festivals we're playing yeah. next year. There's already like seven festivals or something. All right. But that's like just because we're in Europe, and Europe has the most festivals. We oh play. yeah, I think it has like five hundred or something. Yeah. You know, or even more, probably more. Yeah. And there's but there's at least five hundred metal festivals, so yep. they always need bands, and we always get invited, and we can't play everywhere. You yeah. know. And sometimes we had to cancel. Sometimes we had to. We can't go. And sometimes we don't just at the time. It's almost like a, uh, a matter of um, organizing the, the time schedule. Um, but yeah, that that won't distract us too much. I mean, if we play a couple of festivals in between, it keeps things fresh. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much, Millie. Thank it was you. A pleasure to talk to thank you. you. Um, any do you have a last message to the fans? Yeah. Canadian fans, keep it metal. We love Canada, and we will come back here as soon as possible, as soon as the new record is done. So you heard it. <laughs> so, there, so there you go, Creator. Thank you, Millie. Right. Um, be be sure to catch Creator on the tour with Arch Enemy, running through the U.S. and Canada through November. And the European metalheads, look out because this tour is coming towards you, and it's going to kick your ass. And be sure to look out for new creator music coming soon. Um, Alex, you're watching on MasterKingdom.com. See you next time.